Hey everyone, hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Shelly and what are we doing today? Well today I'm going to be showing you a bunch of books illustrated by Edward Gorey right here. He is an American illustrator who was born in 1925 and he has this very Victorian Edwardian style of illustrating and before me I have a mix of my own collection of Edward Gorey books um, or items i.e. the very thing that's on top and then I also have a couple of books uh, from my library. I thought what I would do is show you the works and also compare them a little bit because there is a slight difference between the way that some of them were printed and I think that that could be quite helpful. And I hope to give you all a visual experience, um, a visual delight in showing you Edward Gorey's work. And I hope that this is a wonderful resource for the future in case anybody was interested in Edward Gorey or anybody wanted to see what his work was like or maybe where to start if you were considering purchasing one of his books. Um, or if you're just interested in Edward Gorey, then you clicked on the right video. So if you are new here, then I'm Shelly. As I mentioned, I love books and reading. I have a soft spot, uh, a soft spot, a, um, a piece of my heart goes to illustrated works. And Edward Gorey is one of those illustrators that always captures my attention, that I am continuously interested in. And whenever I see his work, not only can I, ad I often identify it before I realize or before someone tells me that it's Edward Gorey, but um, I'm always endlessly fascinated in his dark humor and um, his style. Okay, so let's just get started. I'm gonna move these off camera and we're gonna start with this very tiny item first. It is, um, I'll tell you that in just a moment. This is The Hapless Doorknob, A Shuffled Story by Edward Gorey. Um, Edward Gorey has a knack for rhymes. He loves dark themes. Um, and this is a really neat item because it is cards. It's a story told in cards. And as I lay them out for you, I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, Edward Gorey's life. But actually, so let me finish what I was saying. So these are cards um, and you can shuffle them up and then tell the story in a bunch of different ways and it should, in theory, make all make sense every time. So I'll lay out the cards before you. This is the back of the card. So Edward St. John Gorey is an American illustrator who was born in Chicago, Illinois. And he um, ultimately ended up working as a freelance artist for Doubleday, the publisher Doubleday. And he was tasked to design book covers. And so his art has been featured um, as, as a book cover for uh, Dracula. Whoop, let me move these up. So here are all the cards. I was able to fit them in a single shot, um, a little bit messily, but hopefully it works. Um, and so, and so Edward Gorey ended up uh, designing the book cover for Bram's Sh Bra Brahms, Stro Brahms Stoker's Dracula, and he also designed the covers of H. D. H. G. Wells' War of the Worlds and um, T. S. Eliot's Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats. And so his work was um, as a freelance artist. He he did quite well. And, um, and then his career ended up taking off. 
So as an illustrator, well, I should say his career didn't end up taking off, but around the time that he was designing book covers for Doubleday, he was also producing work on his own. Now his literature is often known as a nonsense literature. Um, and <laughs> it definitely has a tinge of darkness to it. Um, he's often categorized um, with um, as nonsense literature as in uh, Lewis Carroll, the Victorian writer, children's writer, uh, Lewis Carroll, who wrote Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, and Edward Lear, who wrote uh, straight up nonsense poetry. So even though he lived, um, you know, being born in 1925 and Edward Gorey dying in 2000, uh, living much, much beyond, <laughs> living a life uh, outside of this Victorian era, he was clearly obviously, he was clearly very inspired by the writers and the non nonsensicalness of the, of the Victorians because he picked that up and put that in his own work. Okay, this is Edward Gorey's The Ghastly Crumb Teenies. This was originally published in 1963 and this is an ABC Dairy ABC Darien book. So it goes through the entire alphabet and it has a deep darkness to it. So A is for Amy who fell down the stairs. B is for Basil assaulted by bears. C is for Clara who wasted away. D is for Desmond thrown out of a sleigh. And then it continues on. I will flip through this so that you all can see. This is one of the books that I've had in my household for years, and I'm not gonna lie, it tickles me every time I look at it. Um, I am tickled by the darkness that Edward Gorey <laughs> uses and is um, inserted in this seemingly childish book. I have these two books, which I'm going to show you um, together, and I'm going to actually give you a comparison as well. So the first one is The Headless Bust by Edward Gorey, and this is The Haunted Tea Cozy. And I like these books, but I do think that they're flawed. I, when I was looking up uh, about Edward Gorey a couple of years ago, I was very fascinated as to what scale he worked on. Um, and he works at, on a very small, a very, very tiny scale. Um, and so what I think what they did, um, this is just theory, but what they did with these two books or the books that are in this particular set of printing um, is that they, they uh, enlarged the image and so the lines uh, look enlarged and when you enlarge something it uh, amplifies the imperfections now i love hand-drawn art i love when a, a line is not exactly straight i like the imperfections that come i find it very charming um, but i think that when they decided to print this i'll actually start by opening it up let's see so, and you'll see what I mean. So this is The Headless Bust, A Melancholy Meditation on the False Millennium by Edward Corey. This is copyrighted in 1999, um, but I'm sure this work was uh, things that he did previously and then they've rebound them to for this this publishing okay so twas hours and hours after dawn ere the light the last guest was finally gone seva hala from bad to worse adieu adieu to prose hello to verse um so anyways you can see right here that the lines are quite large um and i don't believe that he actually even worked on this 
type of scale. So I will bring it closer. I will flip through this. So though I like this because it is Edward Gorey's work, I don't care for the way the publisher has decided to print this work because I feel like it amplifies and it amplifies the imperfections of it and it actually detracts from the enjoyment, at least for me, because I keep on thinking this would look so much better if it was the size of the ghastly crumtinis. So let me show you. It's just ever so slightly, ever so slightly different. Um, but I think if it was shrunk down just a teeny tiny bit, move this up. If it was shrunk down just a tiny bit, um, everything would actually look uh, better and it would actually look closer to the original work, I believe. But who knows? I don't know much about publishing. Um, I don't know much about how children's books are made. So if you know something about how children's books are made and maybe why um, they chose to uh, this scale versus another scale, or if you know anything about that, I would love to hear from you. Um, and I would love for you to put that in the comments below. So anyhow, let me finish. Let me finish flipping through that. I'll also flip through the Haunted Tea Cozy. This was printed in 1997, though I'm quite sure that this was uh, work that was previously done. So, oh, okay, so here it says, the Haunted Cozy first appeared in December uh, 21st, 1997. So maybe I am wrong. Um, so it says, Edward Gravel, known as the recluse, the lower spigot, to everyone there, and else, elsewhere, <laughs> prepared to take tea by himself on Christmas Eve. So doing these comparisons and looking at Edward Gorey's work side by side has actually really helped me understand um, in the future, you know, what I want to be looking for when it comes to Edward Gorey's work, um, what I want to pay attention to, and for example, if I see another book in this particular set, um, this size, this color, I don't know how many of them exist out there, but if I were to come across it, I actually maybe wouldn't order it because I know that the way that it was it is printed is not exactly my favorite. Um, and for me, that is very useful information. So of the group of books that I own, these two are actually my least favorite. Um, but yeah, so let's move on to something else. So Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats by T.S. Eliot, but illustrated by Edward Gorey. This seems to be printed at the correct scale, not blown up, and perhaps even shrunk down to look even more perfect. Um, I, ooh, I love these end papers. How stunning is that? I just love beautiful books. So this is copyrighted, uh, 1939. And the illustrations were copyrighted for, um, 1982. 
So it says, this book is respectfully dedicated to those friends who have assisted its composition by their encouragement, criticism, and suggestions, in particular to Mr. T.E. Faber, Miss Allison Dandy, and then continues to thank people. I am actually not going to read these poems uh, right now, and I haven't read them because I am going to be reading this for Shorty September. illustrations are just so fantastic. <gasps> wow. I mean, the detail, the detail. Wow. <gasps> mm. That was a lot of fun to flip through. <laughs> okay, so this book is a part of a series of books. Um, one, the first one was called Amphigori. This is Amphigori also, and then there's Amphigori again. So <laughs> again, Edward Gorey playing on his name, Gorey. Um, and this is just a volume of his work. This was copyrighted in 1983. Table of contents. The Utter Zoo Alphabet. Gosh, it's so clever. Look at, see, you see the little faces here? Mm. So Edward Gorey was a huge fan of word games and pseudonames, <laughs> and he loved to do um, little anagrams on his name. And so he has all of these, oh gracious y'all, this is so cool. Um, so here are some of the names that he's uh, written under. Uh, Miss Regera Dowdy. <laughs> um, D. Audrey Gore. Edward Pig. Dwenda Yorger. Okay, so I'm actually going to stop right there um, because I think Okay, I'm, on, I'm going to stop right there, but I'm going to actually go back to the table of contents. And so this book has these, these particular stories, the Utter Zoo, the Blue Aspect, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, they're all put together here in this. So instead of buying um, a single bind up, uh, what you are actually getting is all of these books that he has illustrated or maybe perhaps written and illustrated, I believe. Um, and you're getting it in this bind up that is, you know, um, beautiful and large and has colored illustrations in it. And gracious, look at this. Mm. Love color. Oh, wow. Wow. Ugh, I just love it. So, if you are more interested in perhaps Edward Gorey's career over the years, then this is a great uh, bind up. 
or all of the Amphigory books, I'm sure. Just um, dedicating, each book is probably dedicated to a different time in his life or focusing on different art pieces that he's done. Hmm. Maybe I'll read this for Shorty September as well. See if there's anything else I would like to show you. Ah, so here you are. So here are all the stories that you're going to get with Amphigori. Here are all the stories that you're going to get by Amphigori too. And this is Amphigori also. Okay, one more book to go. So this is Elegant Enigmas, The Art of Edward Gorey. The helpful thought for which you look is written somewhere in a book. Beautiful large photo of Gory and his cat. Um, let's see, when was this published? 2009. So we have a foreword. Um, we have, oh, we have this essay by Karen Wilkin. I am also planning on reading this for Shorty September. So I am uh, giving you kind of a preview of coming attractions but I wanted to make sure that I was showing you and I was really trying this new camera angle out um, and I wanted to do it with something that I was passionate about and Edward Gorey's work is one that oh my gosh makes my heart flutter it's so intricate and well done and detailed and ugh, I just love everything about it <laughs> so um, I haven't explored this book as much as I ought. So this is kind of like a first impressions of this book. Um, but I know that there is like this, this essay. This is done on beautiful thick paper um, that is heavy weighted. Whereas, and it's got kind of a glossy finish. Whereas the previous book, Amphigory also, um, it had a matte finish to the pages. Um, and they weren't quite as heavy. The Gory House. A curtain drop design for Mikado. They have the ghastly crumb teenies or tinies. Oh my gracious. Um, that she's referencing there. Mm, they have uh, a really beautifully done, uh, well printed, and now I'm wondering if those books that I didn't care for the printing, um, the Haunted Tea Cozy, I'm wondering if maybe they're just printed poorly because this is, this is blown up larger than, than the, uh, the, uh, the book cover and um, and yet it doesn't look uh, wobbly or um, printed sort of uh, imperfectly so really nice long essay ooh this is uh, looks like a sketch um, some ideas This is uh, Edward Gorey's cover of Redburn, His First Voyage by Herman Melville. And, um, hmm, interesting. Oh, and then these are the elegant enigmas. These are plates. So, oh, wow. Oh, this is gorgeous. As an object, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous book. I like this because you're getting ideas and the development of ideas here. Same thing, the ghastly crumb tinies, I think it actually is. You're getting this idea and then you're his notes. So no tree, the size. Um, wow, this is great. This is great. Very cool. And you're seeing his work, or at least I'm seeing his work through the years. Mm. 
1966, The Gilded Bat, The Blue Aspic. So I think this book would be best for people who are, or best for readers rather, who are interested in how, how Edward Gorey developed, maybe a little bit more about his life, um, about his career. The, epilept the Epileptic Bicycle. I love this. I love the, the white space around it. This one is far less, far less um, long than the, uh, than the other book, um, Amphigory also. The Broken Spoke. Love this yellow. Oh my gosh, that gorgeous yellow. The Dong with a Luminous Lo Nose by Edward Lear. Fascinating. Ah, these look like Lear drawings as well. I have a Lear book. It's fascinating. Cautionary Tales for Children. I've read this and I knew that um, Gory had uh, illustrated a version of this. Wow. All this stuff in color makes my heart beat faster. And a really nice, um, what is this? What are they calling this? Oh, a catalog of the exhibition so you can look through. That's wonderful. What a great resource. All right, so that's it for me. That is my ultimate guide to Edward Gorey's work, where I featured, um, let me think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven books uh, of his artwork. Please let me know if this was helpful. Please also let me know if you would like to see other videos done in this style, maybe featuring artists or illustrators that um, you would like to learn more about or that you would like to see their work. Um, that would be really, really helpful. Um, and yeah, that's it for me. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye guys.